three rules that all Parisians are following, unfortunately. First one is, everything is overrated. Because you know, I deserve better than this. Second rule, I came by all that stuff before you did. What's better before? And third thing, if it's outside of Périphérique, then I don't even want to hear about it. Paris is known for its cafes. Paris is known for its bars. Paris is not known as a clubbing city. I mean, it's not what Paris is. The French scene totally collapsed because people didn't stick together. All generation, even five years ago, it was not possible to ask to someone to take like a cab to go in a party. Everybody wanted to go like downstairs of his building to go in the club. I think the media, all of a sudden, a few years ago, started really to speak about how Paris is dying because it doesn't let its artists express themselves. I think the New York Times even wrote a report saying that it's the worst city to party in Europe. It's a really, really tiny city, actually. It's really concentrated, if you think about it. People live very close to one another. Once you put a sound system, you're gonna get the whole neighborhood complaining and the police shutting the club down. It's Paris. People are, have to complain all the time about something. We cannot recreate what was uh, done in Berlin. We cannot recreate what was done in London. I think what uh, the Parisian touch would be making this a bit more chic, no? a bit more sophisticated. Paris is like a museum. You got a center of the city and uh, if you want to make very free and interesting stuff, you have to go in the okay. suburbs. We're on the circle road, it's peripheric. If you're inside, you're a Persian. If you're outside, it's the rest of the world. I'm kind of hoping Parisians will stop thinking that way. I traveled a lot. I've lived in Berlin, I've lived in Prague, uh, I worked in Zurich, I lived in New York. I saw the party scene in all these different cities. It's nice to bring to one city what you think is the best of all these different cities. I don't know how he does it and how he finds those places, but he always comes up with something you've never seen before. Sometimes I just ride around my scooter, go out of the city, go into the suburbs, find a warehouse or find a small space and do something. I'm bored when I go to a party and I'm just, you know, there's a DJ playing and I'm just in a square with like everyone else dancing. After a while, you're looking for something else. No stock show change on the modern range. You always find a pig on a flat bank. So this is actually a Congress Center. And when we saw this place, we said, no, forget a Congress Center. We'll never do a, a warehouse party in a Congress Center. But you'll see by yourself, the place is massive. It's like real warehouse feel, uh, uh, very industrial. So we loved it. On the escalator, you're already seeing the stuff, hearing the loud music that's coming from upstairs. And then arriving in this huge room, which is a main party room. My party starts before going to the club. It starts by looking for it. It starts by going on Google Map to see where it is. And that's where a party starts. So if you already know the place, it's not as fun. What's the fun is going to some place undiscovered. You, you have no idea where it is 24 hours before the party. And that's the whole, that's the whole fun.
Depending on the space, I organize the party, the music, everything depending on the space. The space defines the whole thing. Dinard showed that uh, it was possible to, to make something different happen outside of the club circuits. Paris scene is very elitist. It's um, Usually you go to some place, you have a bounce where he says if you can go in or not. Uh, we're the other way around. We say if you're aware of the party, then come. If you don't know where it is, it means you're not curious to know about these alternative events. What really killed the French scene was clubbing in Paris. Drugs, police, dirty club managers, and a bad energy on the musical scene. There was this very heavy feeling that stole the freedom out of everyone. When you go clubbing for the first time, you, you want to feel part of something new, something in the making. We were at the end of a uh, cycle with electronic music. So after a while, you need something new. Everything is happening again. And uh, yeah, now actually it's kind of cool. New clubs have opened. It's evolving. I mean, there's, uh, on Sundays now, there's sometimes five or six parties. Sunday is a party happening like on the side of the river. Most of the people who started like to, to fill in these this parties were just people like a bit tired of partying always in the same locations at night. And you know, when this new option came in, they were like, okay, let's focus on the Sunday afternoon. <laughs> for years, there, there was nothing on Sunday, actually. Not really for 10 years, we were like really bored. We, we, we had to go in Berlin like uh, always to really have fun and uh, three years ago there was uh, a couple like Celine and Giorgio they organized a party a Sunday afternoon party called, called Sunday. I was a resident DJ in New York for Sunday afternoon events I'm like wait a minute everybody's going out on Sunday afternoon in New York and I don't see why they shouldn't be going out in Paris. This music was only you know possible like in clubs not much people were doing parties like in warehouse or you know spe special locations finally this is possible and also partying during the daytime i think is quite new and uh, enjoyable paris right now you have a lot of i mean outside clubs parties you have a, a big a big 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 one it's called concrete it's a party on the, on a boat i think it's the perfect showing of what's happening in paris right now Actually, the little story is that I was in, uh, in another party like uh, called Sunday, just at uh, 100 meters from here. And I saw that place and I was like, wow, I really have to make a party here. <laughs> and so I tried to find like the owner of, uh, of the boat and we had like uh, a little appointment with him. And he was like, yeah, but it's, uh, we want to make a rave party with techno. I said, no, 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 it's not techno, it's a disco with live group. And, uh, and the first one, it was like the total war. Like, uh, 2,000 people, one of the best uh, parties in Paris since, uh, since a long time. Concrete started, they started last about summer. a year ago. Started last summer. And they they, they called they us up like, hey, listen guys, uh, well, we found a spot to do a great party. Only problem is that it's next to you. We're going to be neighbors. Okay, fine, whatever, you know, you have great lineups and it's going great. And before that, everybody was like, yeah, but there is no scene in Paris. The people are really boring. But when I was going to Berlin, I saw like French people from Paris, they were there. So there was a scene. And when they started to organize that party, it was like, yeah, but like every Sunday, there was like 1,000 people coming. I think it's, it was really the start of uh, everything. For me, Concrete is the best party in town. You get in on Sunday morning at 7 o'clock and uh, somehow it's impossible to leave. 
the energy who comes from it, I think it's never happened in Paris. I think that kind of energy is giving people hope to, you know, to become part of it. Sometimes we have a lot of people on this bridge, like coming for take pictures of, of the of the crowd, and I think they don't really understand what happened here, like a party with techno in a, in day. In the past, when you were going to a party, you had two kind of parties, like the musical parties and the party people parties. In that kind of music parties, people were, you know, so intense about the music that they forgot about dancing. And the other side of Paris was the party people. You know, they were dancing, don't taking care so much about music. Brice today reached a point where we mix that two people and it's concrete. One year ago I was with a suit and with a tie and working as a business engineer. And now I'm just talking about music like uh, all day long. I, I feel that I'm creating something in Paris because I was waiting for it and I was waiting for someone to do it and now I'm doing it. If you want to have a real exchange, if you want to build a scene, you got to have the people talking together, inspiring each other. You got to get to know their personality a little bit more. That builds some pretty strong bonds and is pretty motivating to get some good work done. I've invited everyone that's just been knocking on my door to stay very open and to meet the people, listen to their music, argue about music, even just having a laugh together. Quelques mois euh, que il euh, y a des jeunes artistes de talent euh, qui m'envoient des très bonnes démos et euh, en fait <coughs> quand on a commencé in Paris, we are a small community of people who are doing techno and we think that demented is like a really small family who is doing really good techno and who is like um, giving advices and in anything, every, everyone to produce, produce and just sharing ideas. Now we're gonna, we're gonna go to the other room, we're gonna hit some stuff. I think it's interesting to stay in a principle of debate. Here, now we have to respect the respect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Attention. It's just a way of having this human thing happening because on Facebook or during parties, it doesn't happen. New ideas, new people, listen to some music, see what happens. Bon alors, euh, qui est volontaire après People start to think about moving their studios, workshops. Outside Paris, it's a big leap forward. We're going to this place called Syrah, an old factory. It's been transformed into a, an amazing art place with rave parties going on. Syrah is run by a guy called Anatole. Anatole is a guy that uh, 
likes to have his dreams come true, I, I guess. A exuberant and romantic dreamer that kind of made one of our dreams come true there. Salut! <laughs> Ça va? We have uh, 18 artists in this beautiful building, which is over 40,000 square feet. Just the sheer scale of this building is amazing for artists because your production takes on a whole new scale in itself, you know? Your ideas become bigger, your, you know, your, your, kind of your dreams become bigger. The idea is to have all the studios around a big communal space. Downstairs we have uh, the biggest floor, which is the floor that was uh, used up to now mainly for events. Minimal techno, electronic music events and stuff. As you can see, it's like a pretty Enormous space, I think 13,000 square feet all in one go, which is like very rare and very large for Paris. You find it in Berlin, in New York, in London, but here in Paris, these are spaces that you can't really find. Also in this space, there's a lot of like funny little things that can happen, like uh, this is the old lift. The old lift, which didn't work, so we turned it into a kind of mobile mobile kind of sitting room, which is a, that was a fun little project. And whenever there's an event, people just don't tend to see. There's a lot of, lot of things hidden behind doors and stuff, uh, spaces that you wouldn't expect. Music's happening here. There's maybe stuff that we can <laughs> really talk about, you know? It's, uh, it's embarrassing if my mother was to watch this. And then you just arrive in here and have this kind of crazy mix and mash of wood and <laughs> Stuff like that, so it's kind of like, in a way, kind of a playhouse. And I myself, as a, the, the president of Mad Agency, I, I spend the whole of my time here in, uh, in the building. This is my apartment, and this is where I get my ideas, I relax, I play and stuff. I mean, the suburbs have a bad image here. The north area of Paris, where Agnès is and this building is, is generally considered as being quite unsafe. It's just the, the government doesn't do much about these areas. With the events we've had here, we've gotten a lot of people to come over from Paris, you know, to cross the river, to cross the périphérique, you know, the ring road around Paris, which is kind of like an iron curtain. Like, people, Parisians never go further than the périphérique and stuff. But it's kind of like gently changing at the moment. I think our project would be better to just show the government and the, the mayor like what could happen in these kind of areas and these kind of big abandoned buildings because there's so many abandoned buildings around Paris and even in central Paris uh, that just, they're just not being used and stuff and it's just such a shame, such a waste, you know, so many people are looking for space. For me it's the only way of living. <laughs> I don't want to live in a tiny little studio in Paris, you know. Uh, I don't want to do that. There will be more and more warehouse party, private party by new, by new promoter, by the, the new generation. The party will take place in the suburb of Paris, and I think it's the future. I think the clubs of the center of Paris, they will have to find new ideas if they want to survive. We have a lot of things to say in Paris. We are known in all the world as followers, but we've never been the creator of something, you know? Right now, maybe it's time for, for us to, to take that chance to, you know, to be on the map. We are trying to change the mentality. If the music is good, the sound system is cool. If you are cool, you will have fun. It's a scene that's just beginning. We're in the cocoon of something new, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be extremely interesting. <laughs>